Welcome back. Another edition. How we doing out there? Good, great, great, and, and wonderful. Let's keep it moving. As you see on your screen, your dial, however you are choosing to join us today, I appreciate you, and I know that the film appreciates your support as well. So what do you see? You see Exiled, the Chosen Ones. Exiled, the Chosen Ones. So what is Exiled? After a man-made virus failed to reduce the world's overpopulated areas, uh, global leaders resolved to institute a new program that would legitimize a new venture, a game show to make things interesting. The game would be broadcast daily, uh, live-streamed, and the show would soon become... The Chosen Ones. I got to tell you, this is one of my favorite action films that I've seen in 2022. It's like The Running Man meets The Condemned meets Battle Royale, and I I had a hell of a good time. Uh, Who's it starring? Well, we got Sonny Pang, we got Hana Al Rashid, Oka Antara, Nick Khan, Zach Lee, James J. Bryan, John Zhu Zhang, Carl Wharton, Craig Edwards, Philip Maudsley, and many, many more players in this uh, particular game. Uh, From the crew side of things, Things. We got music by Martin Roberry, cinematography by Lucas Akravos, and written and directed by the man, the myth, the legend himself, Ranjit S. Marwa. So as most of you know, and I know I say this all the fucking time, but as most of you know, I can't stand doing the show. Let's just let's just be real. I can't stand doing the show unless, unless I have someone interesting to talk to, and I think we are definitely going to achieve that today. I only reach out to people that I know are going to be a good hang. Like, I mean, let's just let's just be real. I I make it easy for myself, easy work. And uh, the uh, gentleman that decided to come on the show today, I thought was easily probably the biggest standout um, in Exiled, the Chosen Ones. His character's name is Cato Plasma, and I got to tell you. That dude was fucking wild. I mean, I had never talked to him before, and I was sending him, like, screenshots of me watching the film when uh, he happened to uh, come across the screen, (laughs) and I was just like, dude, you're fucking insane. You're fucking insane. So joining us all the way from the UK, first time on the Ellis Cinema podcast, we got James J. Bryan joining the show. Sir, sir, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Well, thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate what you just said. It's um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool film, and yeah, I was pretty fucked up. <laughs> I mean, super <laughs> fucked up, super fucked up. And, and, like, to say that you're a standout when you have people like Sonny Pang in this, when you have people like Hana Al Rashid, I mean, even Nick Kong, who was, uh, Nick Kong, who was a fucking psychopath in this, and we get to your scenes, and I'm just sitting here going, what the fuck? When I had actually sent you that picture, um, that was the first time I was watching it, and I paused it on the spot, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I said that to you, and I was just like, holy shit, dude. This guy, if there, there wasn't a 1 through 10 there. You were, at, you were sitting at like a 25. Like, that's, like you were just <laughs> full on going for it, which I, which I love. I mean, like I, I really think that there were parts of it where, like, and I think I mentioned it that for all those of you that don't know, because now it's it's ancient history. You'll never be able to hear it again unless I decide to post it again. But I already did a show on this, and I decided let's do a take two. Let's see if uh, James will come on here, especially after his kind words. Let's see if James will come on here. But what I had mentioned in that is that there's so many characters in this. This the scale for which Ranjit went for, I think, is just. I mean, he he bit off a big chunk, and for you, out of you know fifteen twenty characters, for you to Make me pause a film because I don't do that. I don't look at my phone. I let I let things. You know, I watch movies the way that they were intended to be. You know, like I, you should, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah well. and, and when you came across the screen, I I literally went, "Who the fuck is this dude?" I paused it. <laughs> I googled. I, I googled who you were, and I was just like, "Dude, this." And then when I and then when I saw what you I, obviously you know how this works. Like when I saw what you actually look like, I'm looking at the screen. I'm looking at your PR photos. The screen, the PR photos. I'm like, "Holy cow!" They nailed the makeup. They, uh, you know, the character, everything about Cato Plasma. Uh, and I think it was another thing too. Is like. It fits so well in this piece, mm-hmm. like like it didn't feel shoehorned at all. And um, but before we get into uh, Exile, the Chosen Ones, I, I I typically like to ask a couple of softball questions for my actors, actresses, or whoever um, is nice enough to come on, but. I'm interested to know where this all started for you in terms of acting. What what was there a pivotal moment in your life when you were growing up and you were just like, you know what, 
that's what I'm fucking doing. I'm going to be an actor. Yeah. I'm going to entertain people. And I was just curious if you had any fun stories about how you became an actor. Well, there's, I, I got a couple of, there's a couple of incidents. One when I was a little kid, when I was about six years old. I don't know if you remember. I don't know if you're old enough to remember. The Six Million Dollar Man. Of course. Of it. course. Yeah. Well, I was a big fan. I was a huge fan. I used to run around the yard, jumping off trees, a couple of times causing myself serious injury because, you know, that guy with skyscraper building, so there's me going, I'm Steve Austin, I can do this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I wanted to be him. And, uh, you know, my parents then took me to um, these little drama classes that were held in churches and things like that. And instead of me reading Shakespeare quotes and that, I'd be running around being the six million dollar man and trying to beat everyone up and you know the the old <laughs> you know lifting cars and stuff and then um as i got older um you know as life does you kind of go in a different direction um and i had this actor friend and he wanted to go to this audition but because his car had broken down he asked me to take him that was like a two-hour drive down to this audition but i said yeah i'll go i'll take you not a problem so I get down there and he asked me to come into the um, casting room with him. And I'm like, you sure? You know, these people aren't going to be like, um, who's this guy? And he went, no, 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 no. It's cool. Just come in, sit down. So I'm sitting there watching all these actors go in, come out and then disappear. And my friend was the, the last guy to go into the audition room. So he, he does his thing. He comes out. I said, right, you ready to go? He says, yeah, yeah, let's go. So as we, as I'm getting up to leave, the casting director comes out, sees me, and goes, oh, sorry, I didn't know there was anyone else here for the casting. Are you? Do you want to come in now? So I tried to explain, no, I'm, I, I'm not here for the casting. I'm, I'm not acting. I'm just here supporting a friend. And my friend said, well, you do all these weird and funny voices, and, you know, you act like a clown. Because I used to kind of compare me to Jim Carrey with the attitude type thing. <laughs> And the mirror crease. I'll be there going, you know, my name is this, 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 and go on all silly and everything else. So I went in, did the casting, took it as a joke, didn't expect nothing. Just thought, this is, this is, you know, it's, it's just a little fun spot for me to do. I could turn around and say, I did this. So about two, two and a half weeks later, I get this telephone call, and I don't know who the person is. I'm like, hello, and they're like, um, yeah, is this uh, James Bryant? And I'm going, yeah, uh, who are you? Um, well, this is such and such from the, the casting department. And I was like, I thought it was my mate at first. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? Go on, do one. You ain't getting me on this. And I hung up the phone. So I get another phone. <laughs> yeah, I hung up the phone. So, so two minutes later, I get a phone call back again saying, no, it really is such and such from casting such and such. We want to offer you the part. And I was like, really? This is legitimate. Yeah. Oh, I'm really sorry about the last phone call. He <laughs> reached to me to go fuck off. <laughs> yeah. So um, I got the role, and it was it was a commercial. It's just you know like like a commercial, and I was playing this dithering old man with one leg type thing. But he had to do a lot of falling over and and you know stupidness like that. And I did that, and I thought, well, that's cool. Straight after that, I got a phone call from an agent saying, "We saw your advert. We'd, we'd like to take you on our books." And I was like, oh, yeah. Um, I haven't had much training, though, apart from when I was a little kid. They said, that's not a problem. We'll, we want to we want to meet with you. So I went in. My training was I was the $6 million man. That was my training. Yeah. I was with the $6 million man. <laughs> I trained as a $6 million. I was Steve Austin. So uh, I was doing all the eyebrow and the... So, um, so yeah, I went down, met the agents, and um, they liked me that much that they put me through... Uh, drama school and um two years in that two year period when i was training um they were putting me up for auditions um and then i started getting a little gig here and a little gig there um and i finished my training and then it kind of just went from there and then the rest as they say is history so <laughs> Oh, man, I'm I'm glad that you went in there on a on a whim, and you know you 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 kind of you put yourself into it because you know like you know some people they just they could have 
kind of been one and done, didn't like the experience or whatever. And now here you are. And, you know, I, I think we're going to be talking about you in the years to come. I really do. Like, I, I think I've, I've watched enough to where I, and I'm sure you're probably similar. You can, you can look at an actor, you can look at a director or whatever, and just be like, you know what, whatever it is, whatever, you know, the fuck that is, they have it, you know? And I, yeah. And, yeah. and I remember thinking that very vividly once I saw you come across the screen on Exiled, the Chosen Ones. And I, and for me, for someone who watches as much as I do, like, I, and I don't say this to blow smoke, man, but I am going to blow smoke. It's not easy to do. It's not easy to make me raise my eyebrows and go, look at the, look at the performance that is happening on screen right now, because it's, it's, I mean, it blew me away, man. And uh, I'm, I appreciate it. I'm just glad that your friend's car broke down. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, I'll have to give thanks to Lee Majors for that because, you know, at the end of the day, it was <laughs> it's all down to him. You know? <laughs> so, so here we are. We're, you know, we it's 2022. You have this very large scale action piece that you're um, a part of. How did uh-huh. that role come to be? Like, how did you get in touch with Ranjit or whatever? How did you become. <laughs> Cato Plasma. Um, well, it started off about a decade ago. Um, Ranjit was advertising because um, you know Ranjit used to do these short films, and, uh, and you know, so he was advertising for an actor to be in this short film. And um, so I hit him up and said, um, "Look, I, I haven't done much by way of acting, but." Um, I'd like to give it a go. And the role was for Moses, you know, the biblical Moses. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> okay. you know what? I can do that. I can, I can, you know, I've always got that type of attitude that, you know, if you tell me I can't do something, I'm going to go goddamn trying yeah. and, and, and bust the gap trying to do it. So, yeah. So I, I contacted Ranjit and says, you know, um, I'll give it a go. I can do it. And Ranjit was kind of at first, well, I haven't really seen you do anything. I don't know if you can, you know. Your audition tape was a bit... Because at the time, I didn't know how to do an audition. You know, I would just stick a camera there, hold the lines there and be like this, my name is James Rock. And, you know, it was that kind of stupid. Right, right. So, um, so I sent it and I said, just give me a shot, right? And if you don't like me within the first five minutes of me being on your set, right, I'll walk away. You'll never, ever hear from me again. So thankfully, Ranjit says, yeah, I'm going to give you a shot. And he gave me the address where to go to. So I went to his house and we had about an hour conversation. And he says, well, the role is actually two roles because the other actor has dropped out. So you'll be playing Moses and you'll be playing God. So I said, okay, well, then, that's a big yeah, yeah, why not? Why not? You know, nobody knows what God's like, you know, if you believe in God. No one knows what he's like. Yeah, I'll play God. You know, I, I don't know I'm going to do it, but I'll do it. So um, <laughs> so he, 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 we drove out to this, uh, to I think it was Sutton Park at the time, and it was about a 20-mile drive from where, where Ranjit lived. And he gets this blanket, and I go, right, I want you to strip, put the blanket around you and everything else. And I'm like... Cool, no problem. So I put the blanket around me. Um, and then he starts shooting. He says, what I want you to do for the first scene is cry. I'm like, okay. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, all right. You want me to do that? <laughs> so I said, um, can you slap me? And he's like, I'm not going to slap you. I said, I need to have something to make me cry. And I don't know what else to do. So he said to me, think about the worst possible thing that ever happened to you. So I said, okay. And he says, and use that. So I said, okay, I'll do that. So an hour goes by, I'm still not crying. Ranji's getting fed up at this point, <laughs> going, I don't know what I'm going to do with this guy, but I- I'm here now, right? right? And he's looking at me as if to say, your car's over there, it's time for you to fuck up. So <laughs> I'm like, I better get this right. So, um, you know, when you get the broken twigs and they're on the floor and some of them are really sharp, so I'm kneeling down and I see this twig and I go, right, I'm going to, I don't care if I bleed, I'm going to bleed for this. So I kind of stab myself in the leg <laughs> and I go, oh, and you know, you start getting the tears come down. Right. right, right. right. Nothing else was working. <laughs> and Ranjit started filming and then um, we did the scene and then he played back the scene to me afterwards. And I was, and I, I, I don't like to 
uh, kind of blown myself or big myself up because I, I think it's a bit vain of me to do that. But the scene knocked the shit out of me. I thought, fucking hell, this is brilliant. This is, this is fucking awesome. So Ranji says, you've done really well. We're going to do it again. Now that you know what you're going to do, we're going to do it again, and then we'll do the rest of the scenes. So I did the rest of the scenes, and um, then it came to playing God. So Ranjit said, I'm not going to have you there as a physical presence as God. I want you to do the voice. Are there any voices you can do? So I said, well, yeah, I can I can do, you know, I can mimic just about anyone that you want me to. And he went, I want you to do the voice of God. So I went through a couple of voices and things like this. I, actually, one of them was kind of a squeaky. It was like, I am the voice of God. <laughs> You know, and Ranji's looking at me like this, going, "What the hell have I done?" <laughs> you know. <laughs> but in the end, we got it, and and I, I sound more like uh, James Earl Jones in it as the voice of God. But it worked, it, it worked, and then um, Ranji put the, the video together because what he used to do, Ranji was really quick and fast at putting the short films out. He'd do it the same day, so he put it out, and then people started messaging him and, and remarks on YouTube saying. This guy's awesome. You know, where did you find him? What's he doing? And then Ranji got back in touch with me and says, you've blown him away. People people love it. Do you want to do another one? And then we just kind of built up that relationship of doing short films. And eventually we became my brothers. And um, so when Exile came up, I was offered another project, which was um, in Manchester. And it was really good money. It was a really good project. But because me and Ranji um, always work well together, and I always know that whatever Ranji's on, it's going to be good. So I turned down this other project, and I said to Ranji, I'll do X old. And he says, I can't pay you what I'm paying them. I says, I don't care, mate. I'll do it. Whatever, whatever, however you want to do it, I'll do it. Um, and that's how X old came about. And then as with the character Kato, um, the wonderful thing with Ranji is, is that with actors that he trusts, he'll give you the script and then he'll say to you, create the character however you want to. And then if you don't want to do those lines, don't do them. If you think that your lines in your head are better, do those. Do whatever the fuck you want with it. Just give me that magic. Um, so I did. He gave me the, the scripts and he just gave a brief description you know, basically the guy's a nutter and he likes to eat people and things like that. And I says, yeah, I can do that. Um, when do you want to shoot? And he, he gave me the dates and I went down there, got into makeup. And then um, I think for two days, nobody spoke to me because I kind of went into Kato plasma mode. You know, I was going around snarling at everyone and telling them they look like, um, you know, so <laughs> it was all kind of like that. Um, and we did the scene and... I don't actually remember doing the scene because I was so much into being Kato that when I watch it back, I actually refer to Kato as a separate entity to me because, <laughs> you know, it's it's not who I dude, am. Dude, uh, you, I know, I know dude, for any actors that, that it's not them, but... Dude, but, you were. Uh, you went, like, into the fucking shadow realm there for a few minutes. <laughs> like, you just fucking, like, I was just like, this, like, I know, you know, he's an actor and everything, but he, he's, the, the real person behind Kato ceases to exist right now. Yeah, right? that was it. You know, James Bryan disappeared. He went cuckoo. And Cataplasma jumped in and, and took over. I mean, it's like even with the with the heart that um, I chewed into. Um, I made a suggestion to Ranji, and he had to get health and safety involved to make sure that we could do it, and that there was going to be no, you know, uh, physical ailments <laughs> to anyone, and you know all that shit. Um, and I said, "Can I bite into a heart?" And they went, well, I don't, yeah, we can get you a fake. I no, I says, you know, can you get a real heart? And they went, Jay, you're a bit too much. I says, no, no, not a human heart. You know, like uh, a, a cow's heart or a shit. You know, a, a heart that, you know, you can buy from the shop and, you know, you cook. <laughs> and it's, so they got in touch with Elf in Safety and they came down and they did all their checks and everything else. And they went and got the heart and they did the checks. And this magic says, so, um, what, how, how do you want to do it? And I said, I'll just do it. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'll just do it, <laughs> you know, so just just leave me to it. So uh, one of the production team said, well, if we cut a, a chunk of it out and then put it back in, that way then you're not struggling and it won't look like that you're struggling to, to tear it out, you know, and said, so we don't want to cause no damage 
to your teeth or anything else because the heart is pretty tough, you know. Right. Because I didn't want it cooked; it was raw, <laughs> you know. So it's just, okay, let's let's do that. So they cut a bit out and then they kept it in like a um, freezer box and that for me to do the scene. And then when the scene started, you know, Ranji had no idea what I was going to do. I mean, I changed the lines, I changed everything. I spoke in a different language, you know, and I just, I, I just let Kato take over and do his thing. And, you know, all the blood, you know, is, is real from the heart and the squeeze all over me and, and all that. And oh, really? Yeah, was, really? Oh, yeah. 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 I squeezed it all out onto me and I was, you know, and, but it's, it's it's kind of weird because I don't like I said I don't remember doing it. I just when I watch it, I'm like, fucking guys, eh? What the fuck? You know? <laughs> I mean, but I tell you what, though, man, I think that's a testament to your talent. I think the best actors, and I'm very hesitant to you know talk about the whole method thing because I kind of uh-huh. I go back and forth on how I feel about you know method actors or whatever. But I think when you're good at um, what you do. Um, you should disappear like you should have almost like an out of body experience. And I don't care if the um, you know, the character is not near as, uh, uh, you know, crazy as Cato is like whatever it may be. When when you disappear, I think that's when you're you're really taking your job to the next level. I really do. Yeah. Well, I always believe that, you know, when it when it comes to especially acting, um, if you're going to do a role, give yourself to that role regardless, you know, it, it doesn't matter what the role is. You know, you want people to watch that and believe what they're watching, you know, cause I, first and foremost, I'm a movie fan. You know, I, when I first watched Friday, the, uh, not Friday the 13th, I mean, that's a different story. That was fucking awesome. But when I first watched like Freddy Krueger in Nightmare on Elm Street, when I first saw Freddy, I literally had nightmares and I was kind of had this big smile on my face because of the nightmares. Freddy was fucking real to me. I actually was scared to go to sleep that night after watching it, <laughs> thinking that motherfucker is going to come and be, you know, yeah, right in my head. Yeah, so, yeah. um, my favorite horror yeah. character of all time, by the way, is Freddy. My favorite horror. Yeah. Character. Mine too. Mine too. He's absolutely awesome. And, um, so when I do characters kind of like Kato, I kind of go back to my Freddy Krueger in the back of my head, the guy that scared me. And then um, he somehow morphs <laughs> into whatever psycho I'm playing. And then, you know, the world gets to see it then. But with um, with Kato and that, I mean, the one good thing about Exiled and, and the way Ranjit filmed it is that, um, like, I, I, I met Sonny and I met Anna and I met some of the other cast. And, you know, they're, they're all absolutely fantastic, phenomenal artists, you know, and I'm, so grateful to have the opportunity to, to, to work with such people. Um, I mean, on the day, I was kind of like, you know, that imposter syndrome. You know, you're there and you're like, I'm actually here with these guys. Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling I, it right now, actually. I'm feeling it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't meet them until after I did the scene. You know, with Sonny, and with Sonny I met as I was doing the scene because, obviously, he's involved in the scene. Anna I didn't see till halfway through the scene. But um, even Sonny was a bit, because Sonny went out on record and said that I was one of the best actors he, he's ever worked with, with the betrayal, with the betrayal of, um, of of Kato. And even Sonny didn't speak to me for the rest of that day. <laughs> you know, he was, but it was such a, it was such an honour to hear that from him and, and work with him and then see how these guys, um, you know, how they come together and put the scenes together. Because, you know, everyone is different. But when it's people that you kind of idolise and you, you see how they do it, you know, because for me, it's a forever learning process acting. You never stop learning and you never stop giving. So, but it was fun, you know, just watching how Ranji works on some of those guys and what he made them do. <laughs> for you, it's just absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, I got nothing. I got nothing but respect and 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 praise for all of them because they did. All of them did such a fantastic job. And there's so many characters in the in, in the film. You know, uh, I, I think that was a few people's concern, not mine because I knew Ranjit would pull it off. But to have so many characters, there was a point where people thought it might be confusing to people. Um, and I kind of mentioned, well, you saw the Running Man, yeah. Have you seen the Condemned, yeah. Well, you know, like. Steve Austin in there and Arnie in there, how all them characters kind of revolve around them. He said, I can name every character in The Running Man. And they were kind of like, yeah, yeah, we'll see where you're coming from. He said, it'll fit, it'll work. And each character, I think, stands out 
that much that it's that it's, it's like a bunch of little short stories put together to make the whole and i think it works absolutely brilliantly and you know does. i can't wait it, i mean it totally does and i think i had said it on the first show and again i i, I i'm a piece of shit so just take this with a grain of salt for me <laughs> it would have i i think i would have rather this is selfish i would have rather seen it as like an hbo mini series so that i <laughs> could get all that extra stuff i wanted and i understand like as an action piece for what it is, it plays really well, but you know, I think I'm just, uh, uh, I guess the best way to put it is I've just seen so much that like, I don't care if something is 15 hours long, as long as the story's told right. And then when I see characters like you, uh, you, Hannah, I want to see almost like a long exposition of how we got to this point. And I understand, look, that's a lot of time and money and scheduling and everything else. But like, I, I remember when the credits were rolling, which by the way, two post credit scenes for those of you listening. So don't sleep on that. Um, but when I was, wa- I'm sitting there the, watching the credits, just going, I counted on my hand. I was like, this character I want to know more about. This character, this character, this character. And uh-huh. once we just got to a certain point, I was just like, that's what I wanted to have happen. But now I've I've kind of shifted gears. Now I'm all in on part two, whenever whenever that may come. And, and I really hope that we do get to see that because I really thought – um, the piece was strong as a whole. I, I, I really uh-huh. do. And, and I would love to see where we, we end up going and, and I don't, you know, you listen to the show prior. I don't do any spoilers here, but Ranjit's promising a lot. James. He is. He's, he's promising <laughs> a lot right now and, and I'm yeah. for it. <laughs> I'm for it. Yeah, you see the, 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 you know, Ranjit never, never sits down. He never relaxes. He's always, I mean, Ranjit is the definition of, of movies. That's it. He just wants to make movies um, where that he can enjoy. And if he enjoys it, he knows everyone else is going to enjoy it. And that's his mission in life, to tell as many stories through film as possible. And with Exiled, you know, especially part two, yeah, you know, um, I hear rumors and I hear things and I hear little things, but I do hope. You know, and I think I, I think there's a possibility it will happen that it it will it will come out bigger, better, and stronger than than the first one. So you know, I can't see Ranjit not doing it. I mean, because he put at the end like a to be continued. So you know. But yeah, yeah, it is what it is. It's good. <laughs> well, man, um, I am gonna get you out of here. I wanted to tell you though, just face to face, easily the standout in exiled. Um, and after you and I had been talking on the DM, I just like, I, I, I didn't want to waste this opportunity to get in touch with you and have this conversation. Um, because I, I, I think that we're going to see your face more often, you know, aside from exiled <laughs> too. I just think you're, you're strong. You got the goods, man. And, uh, not mm, only am, am I uh, a fan, but a friend now, man, like anytime yeah, you, you want to come on the show to promote anything, I'm all for it. Like you don't, you don't even have to ask, man, just tell, just be like, Hey, I got this coming out next week. Let's do something and we'll make it happen. All right, man. That's cool. Oh, can I just say one other thing? Of course. Of course. Yeah. Um, well, Exile is having a special screening at the Mockingbird Cinema in Birmingham on August the 13th, uh, where you get to meet cast, crew, have your photos taken, have the shit scared out of you. Um, <laughs> Are you going to be in full Cato? you going to be I'm in full Cato? I'm going to be in full Cato mode. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'll sit there next to you, put my arm around you while you're watching the film. Um, <laughs> just stare at you uncomfortably for the entire film, yeah. just staring at you. <laughs> just sit there going, mm. um, yeah, I'll do all that. And uh, So, yeah, August the 13th at the Mockingbird Cinema Custer Factory in Birmingham. Uh, tickets are online. Uh, you can find them on Ranjit's Instagram and the Exile page and all that for jazz. And, uh, yeah, we just guys would just love to see you all there. And one other thing, um, I'd like to thank you for having me on the program. I appreciate you promoting the film and, and, and having us all, you know, getting us all out there. So, you know, from my heart, you know, thank you very much. God bless you. Hey, you're very, it. you're very welcome, man. You make it easy to do in a piece like that. It's very easy to talk about. So I appreciate you, man. And I appreciate the kind words and, uh, I look forward to the next time we can get up and chop it up. 
Definitely. Me too. It's going to be a blast. <laughs> All right, brother. You take it easy. We will talk soon. <laughs> Uh, All, right, see you later. all right, brother. All right. We're going to get James out of here. What a goddamn good guest, just like I fucking knew he would be. Oh. Uh, right now, Exiled is playing on Amazon. You have no excuse uh, but to uh, go and stream that right now. It's very modestly priced. It's thirteen ninety nine. Please go out, stream this. You, Marvel doesn't need your money, okay? Exiled, the chosen one. On Amazon right now. Don't miss out, especially because that part two is around the corner. Ellis Cinema, James Bryan, we gone.